Hi everyone, welcome to Free Daily Bread. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to get into Revelation 13. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, you are the revelation of this, of this book. You are the unveiling. It's all about you. And so many get so obsessed with the Antichrist. But I, I want people to know that you are the most important. But I want you to, to give me the strength and in, in the words to to describe about this terrible beast that will soon be coming on the scene in Jesus name amen all right so um put on your seat belts folks so chapter 13 here we're going to learn about the two beasts first first the antichrist which we all know from the antichrist he's normally always called the beast though and then the false prophet so, um, people, pe you see, people almost become like obsessed with this, these future characters. All right. You see like the replacement theology people they're they're always think they, thinking they know who the Antichrist is because, you know, since they don't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, you know, they're not looking for Jesus Christ. They're looking for the Antichrist and, and they're always so far off with, with who they think that that person could be. All right. People, you see, people expect the Antichrist to be obviously evil. And that's exactly why the majority will be so deceived because the Antichrist is going to come off as like a Mr. Rogers on steroids. Okay. Most, most ignorant to scripture, they want to say he's like one of like America's prior presidents. No. Okay. No, he's not Obama. He's not Trump. Okay, the Antichrist is coming is he's coming from the revived Roman Empire. Okay, and if you know ge your geography, that's Western Europe. All right, the church will not even see this man. So it's a waste of time to try to figure out who he is. All right, he cannot be revealed. That means unveiled until after the rapture. But if anything, this is interesting, may, may we see the forming of the 10 world leaders that will unite with him? Okay, well, that's very possible. It's as if the whole world right now of leaders is competing to be one of these 10 kings from the 10 toes of the Nebuchadnezzar statue prophecy. Seriously, it's like they're all in competition of, being, of who's going to be the 10 kings. What we know is these 10 will pretend to be best friends with Israel. We know that for a fact. And now we have so-called Christians even who actually, who actually trust world leaders that say, vote for me. I'm going to be Israel's best friend. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> That's what the Antichrist is going to say. And in the 10 toes, the 10 leaders are going to agree with the Antichrist. You see what I'm saying? Many think, that, you see, many think the Antichrist also is like e immediately evil. No, he comes with peace. And he's so deceiving that even so-called Christians think the first seal is Jesus on a white horse. With peace. When really, that's the Antichrist imitating Jesus. But let me state this important fact. We shouldn't be obsessed with interest about the imitation. Okay? That's what the world will do. It's much more appropriate for the bride to be obsessed over the genuine Jesus Christ. Amen. So the replacement theology, well, you know, they're looking for the Antichrist. All right? Well, that's exactly what they're going to find. But the church looks for Jesus Christ, who will take us out of here before the beast is revealed. All right, let's start in verse 1, 13 verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Shoo, that's intense. So notice the sea, all right? This this isn't literal. None of this is literal. It's not a big dragon with seven heads, all right, and all this stuff. These are sim this symbolizes things. So let me explain this. You see, you can't take Jewish culture out of the Bible, 
You see, Jews in biblical times, they regarded the sea as wild and untamed and a frightening place, like almost like a resistance to God, they would say. So because ancient Israel was weary of the sea, this is a figure of evil and chaos. All right. Look at Isaiah 57, 20. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mirror and dirt. See? The wicked like a troubled sea. Look at, stay in Isaiah. Look in 17, verse 12. Woe to the multitude of many Woe to the multitude of many people which make a noise like the noise of the seas and to the rushing of nations that make a rushing like the rushing of mighty waters. This is like nation chaos. All right. The nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them and they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind. So. This is known as the seas is known as, as nations that are against God. This is what this is, people. So here we now understand the sea is not literal. All right. He's not standing on the seashore looking out and seeing a beast coming out of the water. The sea literally means global government. All nations combined. Look in 17 verse 15. Talking about the one world religion. And he says to me, look, the waters, this means the seas. Which you saw, this is where the horse sits. That's the one world religion. Our peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. There you go. What's the waters? What's the seas? Globalism. Okay. This is saying that the Antichrist is coming out of globalism. So the place I identified with evil and chaos and, and resistant to God, a beast comes forth. He rises up. That means he came into full power over the world. The ancient Greek word for beast is basically the idea of a wild, dangerous animal. This isn't Satan. Okay. The beast here is better known as what we known as the Antichrist. This is like, there's like four to five chapters in Revelation of many events that happens mid tri midpoint tribulation. This is one of them. This is when the Antichrist resurrected, okay? He just resurrected and he is now declaring he is God in the third, in the third temple. That's what he's doing right now. He's now fully possessed by Satan because he now owns what Satan did. Okay, look at looking back in chapter 12, verse 3. A wonder in heaven. Look, here's Satan having what? Seven heads, ten horns, seven crowns. Well, that's ex that's pretty much exactly what's going on here. But this is the Antichrist who has these now. Well, how is that? Well, that's because Satan is possessing him now. Okay. He's Satan with skin. He's Satan with skin. All right, Satan with skin. Um, so, sorry, hold on. Yeah, so the seven, all right, so here we go. The seven heads, heads means empires, all right? And for a recap, I've already been through this, but I'll explain again. These seven are past empires that have um, ruled over Israel. This is Assyria, Egypt, Babylon, Medes, Persia, Greece, Roman Empire, and the revived Roman Empire that's forming pretty much before our eyes right now. All right, those are the seven. The ten horns are the ten kings. Look back in 17 verse 12. And the ten horns, which you saw, are ten kings. Well, there you go. There's our answer. For the ten horns. Horns are kings. You see when an animal has a horn, he that's how he defeats his opponents. Okay, so these are these are leaders. This comes from the Nebuchadnezzar statue of the ten toes. 
This will be uh, 10 world leaders that give all their power to the Antichrist. And that is also why he has 10 crowns. 10 crowns. That means he is the Antichrist, well, who is pretty much possessed by Satan, okay? He rules over these 10 leaders. So there's 10 leaders, but he's wearing 10 crowns, which means he is the, he is the, he's leading the pack of these 10. He's the leader. The Antichrist rules them. In each of these heads, um, that means empires, all right, that Satan reigned, they also blasphemed God. All of these empires from Assyria, all right, Egypt, Babylon, etc., they all blasphemed God. Which means these 10 world leaders will be like these 10 world leaders, what I believe are they're trying to compete on who these people are right now. They're like many antichrist figures. They also will pretend to acknowledge a God and be best friends to Israel, but really they hate God and they hate the Jews. Do not be deceived. Why do you think every every politician claims to be a Catholic? It's it's almost like a rule. You got to be. Well, where is the root of Catholicism? Well, it's Rome. It's Rome, people. And what's Rome going to be a part of? The revived Roman Empire. So they have to identify with who they're going to be worshiping, you see. Catholicism was only created to be a part of the revived Roman Empire. So news alert, Catholics are not Christians. If they were, they want to participate in obvious idolatry and the abomination of the Eucharist that they claim is their atonement. Okay? It is blasphemy. Anyways, so it is blasphemy and Satan wears the crown of Catholicism. Period. The Pope is just a puppet. Okay? Who hates God. And now we got over 2 billion people thinking he's the holiest man in the world. That just boggles my mind. We will learn more about a that relig a, a religious figure. I'm not saying it's the Pope. I'm going to get into that later. We're going to get into that religious influencer in verse 11 in the next teaching. So the word Antichrist, that simply means anti-Christ. The opposite of or instead of. Um, the Antichrist is the opposite Jesus. He is the instead of Jesus. That's what the world can't wait to embrace. This in no way means he immediately comes off that way. Okay? He will, he's not going to come off evil is my point here. He will come off charming and wonderful, successful, a, 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 a genius with flattery. He will be the world's ultimate winner and appear as an angel of light. Okay? I believe Trump is a test of how so many will be deceived. I really do. The the so many people they look at Trump is how they look at Trump is how the world will look at the antichrist just more. Okay, they're going to look at him as our hero. We need him. If we don't have him, we're all going to die. That's how they're going to look at the Antichrist. And if what I just said offended you, then it's not my fault that you are deceived. Okay. What did Satan offer Jesus in the desert? All right. To own kingdoms. To own kingdoms if he just bowed to him. So that's a really good point. Kingdoms are given to wicked people. The, the God of this world, little G, is Satan. And he's the one that hands out the kingdoms. Okay? Yes, it's God on top who decides it all. But really, it's the kingdoms of this world currently is being leased by Satan. Okay? So can God use the wicked for his will? Well, yes, of course he does. That's what he does all the time. He always uses the wicked for his will. But do we put trust and hope in any president in these last of the last days? No. Okay? Not in these last days when the leaders are getting ready to bow to the Antichrist and give him all their power. 
Wow. Scripture says all nations come against Israel. All in the last days. So we need to stop trusting leaders pretending to love the Jews when they really don't. Okay? Over there hugging on the western wall. All right? Wearing their, what's it called? Kippah. Like they really care. It's all an act, people. Scripture says one thing repeatedly about the last days. Do not be deceived. It says that so many times. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. So look, you want to go and vote? Then go and vote. But let me tell you, don't think America will ever be great again. Verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The wording of verse 2 here will look familiar if you ever studied Daniel. Daniel had a dream in chapter 7 about four empires. This is stating that the Antichrist, as the beast, is now fully possessed by Satan. And Satan owned these past empires. Okay? First, they mention a leopard. That's in Daniel 7, verse 6. That referred to the Greek Empire. Greece overpowered Medes Persia very fast. Hence, a leopard. Then he mentions the feet of a bear. That's Medes Persia. That is in Daniel 7 verse 5. Medes Persia annihilated Babylon like a ferocious flesh-eating bear. And he had a lion mouth. That is in Daniel 7 4. That the lion is Babylon. Babylon overpowered Israel down to nothing like a lion that seeked its prey. Satan will contribute all of these attributes for the end time revived Roman Empire. And this makes it clear at this point, Satan is in the Antichrist. Because the only way Satan can be worshipped is in someone. You see, we can't see spirits. Okay? Satan gave the Antichrist his power and his authority. The Antichrist took the offer that Satan gave Jesus in the desert. Worship me, and I'm going to give you the kingdoms of the world. Preterists don't think the Antichrist will be a real future person. Preterists are children of the devil who try to say that this is all history and it's already been fulfilled in 70 AD. And they refer to the Antichrist as it was Antiochus III. Okay, wrong. This is because they hate the Jews so much. They don't. They hate that God has a redemption plan. So they erase, they, they erase the future of God's plan. Yeah, so many say that the Antichrist was already fulfilled as Antiochus III, who was, who was like a mini Hitler when Greece was in power. You can learn about him in Daniel. I think it's like around Daniel chapter 10 or something like that. People who deny who people who deny there's a final antichrist coming will fall for him. Some say the beast is only a world government, that this is not a real person. This is just referring to the government, not an actual person. No. No. So whatever. Whatever. They're wrong. The beast will be a real living man. And I believe with all my heart, he is preparing for his takeover as we speak. I believe he is behind the scenes right now getting all friendly with both sides of the aisle all over the world. Like a lobbyist. Um, look at Daniel eleven twenty one. In his estate, the Antichrist, look, shall stand up a vile person, that's the Antichrist, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably. He'll come in with peace. And how is he going to get it? He's going to obtain the kingdom by flatteries. He will gain control by flattering people. 
making them feel good, telling people what they want to hear. That's exactly what politicians do. He will obtain, that means gain by flattery and peace. Some people think when he comes on stage that he's going to be so wicked and wicked. No, he's going to be peaceful. Also notice back in, um, also notice so many that don't study scripture think um, like, or for example, they think King Charles is the Antichrist. King Charles, a lot of people think that. No. Did you notice in Daniel eleven twenty one that I just read? It said he won't be of any royal honors. Notice. Study that in your own time. Look at that real close that the Antichrist is not coming from a royal family. People think the whole world will be deceived by uh, King Charles, who is obviously wicked. No, nobody's gonna be falling. Nobody's gonna be bowing. Uh, the whole world's not gonna be bowing down to King Charles. Okay. Again, the Antichrist will come as a dream come true. Okay. So since we are in the last days, don't trust no one that you think will be our answer. Okay. Jesus is our answer. The more you think someone is the answer to this world, the closer they are to the Antichrist. That's exactly what the Antichrist will do. You see, they're all in on it. Republicans and Democrats were only created for dividing and conquering. Divide and conquer. Mission accomplished. And people think that, oh, I'm going to hurt some I'm going to hurt some feelings right now, but that's okay cuz I'm not here for feelings, I'm here for truth. Many people think that America was even that America was set by Christians. Okay? No. Our founding fathers were Freemasons, okay? Again, what does Satan promise to give to those who worship him? Kingdoms. On your dollar bill, it says, in God we trust. Oh, and then it has a pyramid with the Illuminati all-seeing eye, which says new world of the ages in Latin, really. And you think that's the God of Israel that says, in God we trust? No, that's little g. That's the devil, okay? The God they trust isn't Jesus. It's the God of this world, Satan. And if you don't know by now that the Statue of Liberty is Lucifer, then you, you need to crawl out your, your rock really, really slow so that the light of truth doesn't blind you, okay? America has never been good. It has never been great, okay? And today, I bet only two percent of Americans, uh, um, I bet only two percent of America are real Christians who will be raptured. I bet you, I bet you only about two percent. That's how far away from Christianity, from real biblical Christianity, America is way off. The majority are looking for Trump. The one they place right next to Jesus. You'll see all the time. Jesus is my Lord, but Trump is my president. <laughs> and if you're offended by what I just said, then I'm probably talking about you. Okay? Look, I'm not here for feelings. I'm here for truth in these last deceiving days. And I'm warning you. Stop trusting any world leader. Verse 3. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. This is fascinating. Understand my teachings are from love. My strength that I, that I exert in my teachings in this kind of raw boldness, this is coming from God. Okay, seriously. Um, verse three. So people have no idea just how deceiving it's going to get. They have no idea. Just like the Roman Empire, a head was wounded and then healed. That means revived, the revived Roman Empire. Well, so will the Antichrist. The Antichrist imitates who he hates. Okay. 
And it makes the world, he hates Jesus. He's going to imitate who he hates. And it makes the world think that he is God. <sighs> Do you understand? That God is going to allow such a dramatic deception on this world that he's going to allow the Antichrist to be resurrected. They refused, they refused Jesus' resurrection, but they will embrace the beast resurrecting. This this seems to be the, the that midpoint tribulation, like like maybe someone assassinates him. Okay, and he will resurrect more than likely, of course, three and a half days later. I believe this happens just prior to the two witnesses resurrecting. That's in back in twelve. That's back in twelve. I'm sorry. That's back in eleven. I'm sorry. Yep, eleven. So. Sorry, I just got lost. You see, because after the Antichrist resurrects, he's now empowered by Satan to start killing. So you see, a lot happens in mid midpoint tribulation. If you're confused and you're off with what I'm saying right now, you can't just start in the middle. You need, you need to go back a few chapters to get caught up, okay? Because if I kept recapping and recapping, I would be here forever. So, yeah, I spoke about this in my last teaching. Also, let me see. Re look at 17 verse 8. Notice, the beast that you saw was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Look at the end. The whole world, when they behold the beast that was, that was alive... And is not, that means and died, and yet is, that means he resurrected. So that's what verse 3 means. That the Antichrist is going to die. Someone's going to try to assassinate, someone assassinated him. He goes to hell. Then he resurrects. And then he claims to be, I'm God. The world rejected to be in awe for what Jesus did for us. So now they would rather wonder. That means be in awe of the beast. They will think he is literally God in the flesh. Look at 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. 2 verse 9. Even him, the Antichrist, whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. When you go to churches and you're going, going to see all these miracles, signs, healing powers, wonders, well, oh, they're going to love this guy. And with all the deceitful boldness of unrighteousness and them that perish, because why? They received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They didn't want the truth. For this cause and because of that, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Strong delusion. Here's the strong delusion. One of them for sure. Strong delusion indeed. Well, you see, Satan, he just kind of, he counterfeits God. That's what he wants to do. You see, it's like the, it's like the unholy trinity. Satan is anti-father. The antichrist is anti-son. And the false prophet is the anti-Holy Spirit. Verse 4. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they that worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Because they now think he is God, capital G, sitting in the third temple. They worship him as a as he probably sits on a throne like the demonic pope does. It's going to be a fancy throne, I bet. Uh, people bowing to him right now, kissing his rings, bringing him gifts. 
as if he is Jesus in the millennial kingdom. And notice it's the dragon that's Satan they worship. Isn't that interesting? Verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon. That's Satan. Satan at this point is in the Antichrist. And whether they know it or not, to bow to the Antichrist is to bow to Satan. And the whole world that refused truth say, who's like him? Who can kill him? This guy's invincible. He's God. They think he is invincible. This is now the point. It's worship me or die. And many will do it out of fear. Look how afraid they are of like Jinping in China or, or Kim, Kim Jong, Jong Un with North Korea, who, who killed off most of his family to reign. They get respect only out of fear. Let me take a drink. Our God, Jesus, gets our respect out of our love for him. And God doesn't force to get respect from no one. He knocks on the door. You got to open it. He's not knocking that door down. Love with respect is holy. But only fear with respect is tyranny. This world doesn't want love because they don't want truth. So they embrace fear. This God, little g, they now worship will also not be rebuking sin either. That's why they're going to really be liking him. They're not, they're not going to, he's not going to be rebuking sin at all. So that alone will attract most. Something else happens at this time. Um, the one world religion building at this very time, a lot of things happens at once. And one of the other things that's going to happen is the one world religion that was, that was up and going from the first seal is now going to be destroyed midpoint tribulation so that the beast now gets all the worship. Look at 17 verse 16. And the ten horns, the ten royal leaders, which you saw upon the beast, that's the Antichrist, um, these shall, they shall hate the whore. This is the one world religion that they built. And shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. They're going to burn down the building. So whatever building this is going to be, this religious system, they're going to burn it up. Okay, so there's Babylon, there's the city, and then this building is in the city, and they're going to destroy it. They're going to destroy it. Um, look at verse 17. And why do they do this? For God has put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. This is the will of God. It's the will of God. Don't forget, this is not Satan's wrath. This is not the Antichrist wrath. This is not the false prophet's wrath. This is the wrath of God. Yeah, if you want to know why I think Babylon will be Jerusalem, you need to watch my chapter 11, the second part to teaching. Um, notice and, and don't forget, none of this is Satan. Like I said, none of this is Satan's wrath. It's God's wrath. He is the one that put it in their heart to destroy the one world religion. The, the coexist religion, the, the smorgasbord of all beliefs is only a tool to collaborate everyone who seeked after everything but the truth. All false nonsense in one big pool for it to only be destroyed. One world religion is used for one reason only. End time Satan worship. And people beg for this today. Pay attention to car bumper stickers. You'll see that coexist bumper sticker all the time. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, that's the, well, if that's what they believe, crowd, no. No. 
If that's what they want to believe, no. They embrace everything. But you, if you tell them Jesus is the only way, they explode. This is, this world has become, it has become so open-minded that their brain just fell out. Today, you see, it's an insult to say one is closed-minded. It's an insult to say closed-minded. Yeah, well, I am closed, closed-minded. I am closed off to only embrace the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes, anything outside of God's word, we are to be closed off, not open-minded to tolerate false doctrines. You see, open-minded means anything goes. Who are we to judge? Okay. Those will be the same people giving their open-minded foreheads for the mark of the beast in verse 16. People expect the Antichrist and Satan to appear horrific and ugly. Okay, but no, 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen to 15 says Satan is like an angel of light and his ministers come as his workers of light. Satan makes evil look beautiful. My bet the Antichrist might be handsome. I also believe he's going to be in the early 30s, just like Jesus. The age um, Jesus started his ministry, just a guess, that's just a guess. People think the Pope or, or King Charles is the Antichrist when they both got one foot in the grave and one foot on a banana peel, okay? The Antichrist will need energy. They, he's going to need stamina. Stamina. He can't be in a wheelchair, Okay, rolling around when he's about to die. Yeah, I used to think the Pope was the false prophet. But he just got, he's getting too old now. And he's getting way too weak. I believe two younger characters are coming on the scene. Two vibrant men will come to manipulate the masses. Verse 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue 42 months. The word blasphemer, blasphemer may be more of an accurate title than Antichrist. Blasphemer. This man just came out of hell, and now he is Satan possessed, and he blasphemes the God of heaven. Notice he continues to have power 42 months. Goes to show he was in power since the beginning, okay? And he will now reign another 42 months. That's 3.5 years. This prophecy here proves to the preterists that, he had, that this has never been fulfilled. If you want to show this to a preterist. Because Antiochus III, who they say was the Antichrist, and this has already been fulfilled, guess what? Antiochus III didn't reign for seven years. He reigned for 36 years. So, you see, racist, ra that's racism. Racists must erase history to ignore solid truth. Isn't it interesting how, like, BLM and Antifa... How they were, how they tear down statues uh, of who they called racist when the statues were of Democrat leaders. <laughs> they're Democrats, but they're tearing down Democrat statues. They have no idea they're on the wrong side. Well, they're both wicked, but you see what I'm saying? So weird. They, you see, they must erase history so they can appear as if skin color still defines a person's chance to succeed. You see, you know why they do this? This is to blame their failures in life or, or their lack of motivation on racism. It's not, my, it's not my failures or lack of motivation. It's the color of my skin. A, a preterist does sort of the same thing. They, they erase history because of their hatred to the Jewish race. All right? People hate history that's why they hate the bible 
The Bible is the best history book on the planet. If you want to just read the history in here and, and get into the, the geography and the locations and learn what those cities were like. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Something not even the worst character. You know what? There's something not even the worst characters of the Bible did. Did you notice if you're a student of the Bible, that skin color is never a big deal in the biblical days? Never. There was no race wars in the Bible. Matthew 24, 7, Jesus says there will be in the last days, in the during the tribulation, there will be nations against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms. I wonder like, well, what's the difference between a nation and a kingdom? Well, you see, a, a kingdom is a is like a, a, a land mass, land masses, but nations, that's nationalities. Races against races. Verse 6, and he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Verse 6, there's two people on this planet, saved or not saved. That's all God sees. And the Antichrist hates those that were saved and were raptured. He not only blasphemes God, but he also blasphemes the Christians that are in heaven, the ones that got raptured. Satan knows the ones raptured will return to watch Christ set up his throne and they will reign the world that Satan used, that he used to reign. Transfer of authority. Look at 1914. When Jesus returns and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed fine linen, and white and clean. This is the church, people. This is the church. Replacement theology will say that these are angels. No, this is the church. We're going to be behind him on white horses. You ever ride on a horse? I haven't. <laughs> That's going to be amazing. That's going to be amazing. I don't think we're going to have to take any horse riding lessons either. I think we're just going to know how to do it. <laughs> and um, I was wondering, do you think we're going to name our horse? I don't know. Something wild there. So just the things I think about. So that's amazing. So here the Antichrist declares that he is God. So he sits in his counterfeit temple. Also interesting, he's going to, it's, this is kind of interesting too, that possibly he's going to be changing the calendar, like uh, the Jewish feasts and even laws. Look at Daniel 7.25. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. Here we go. And think to change times and laws. And they shall be given unto his hand for three and a half years. So isn't that interesting? Changing times and laws. That's something. That's something. Kind of like how Catholicism read started the Gregorian calendar. Okay? Because we're not on God's calendar. We're on the Gregorian calendar. Okay, so we're off. So it's kind of like he's going to do the same thing. Which is interesting because there is a verse that refers to the very end as God coming, uh, Jesus returning as a thief. Because they don't know when he's coming. Which is weird because you would think they should know when he's coming, which is going to be exactly 3.5 years from when he sets himself up in the temple, the Antichrist. So is it they don't know that he's coming because they don't even have the right calendar anymore? I don't know. Just something to think about. Um, also, notice in Daniel 7, 24, I didn't read that. I didn't read that, but it says that he will subdue three of the ten kings in Daniel 7, 24. So it appears when he starts this, this satanic bout to me and kill the Jews, okay, when he starts all that, 
<clears throat> that three of these 10 liters will be like, maybe not for it. Let me take a drink. <clears throat> so it's possible three will be killed for maybe not cooperating in some way. I believe they also die very soon after this midpoint mark, the three. But they are still, it's interesting because they're still alive when the one world order is destroyed. That's back in 17 verse um, 16. In 17, 16, again, you see, look, it's the 10 horns. The, so all 10 horns in midpoint tribulation are destroying the one world religion. So shortly after this, is when I believe three of them are going to be killed or taken out of power somehow. So, that's interesting. And I don't know why. And I think it's because maybe they're not cooperating. Okay? Um... Will America be one of those leaders or who really fell for the Antichrist and really thought that he was a good guy? And then when he starts going on a killing spree, maybe maybe America is like, no, I'm not down with that. And then we're destroyed. I don't know. Whatever the case, America is either going to be completely destroyed during the tribulation or it's going to... Um, it's going to agree. It's going to agree and join in with all the other nations to join in on a Holocaust. I would rather it be destroyed. So, um, so it appears, I know this is a lot to take in. If, if you don't have much Bible eschatology, uh, you're probably, you probably stopped listening to this a long time ago. I bet you only very few are going to listen to this whole teaching, okay? Very few. That's okay. Because something's going to happen. The rapture is going to happen. And when then that happens, they're, then they're going to watch all of it next time. So this is uh, for the church, all right, to equip other people. And really, this is for the tribulation saints. So right now, so it appears after, um, it, so it appears, yeah, right after um, they destroy the one world religion, three will shortly die after. All right, verse seven. I'm trying to make it to 10 here. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. So this midpoint is, Hunting down every new Christian they can find. This collaborates with chapter 12, verse uh, 17. 12, 17. When the dragon was wroth, he's so mad. This is when he got kicked out of heaven. Uh, the Jews are now taken to safety. And he goes and he look. And now he's after the remnant of her seed. He's after the Gentile Christians. That's what's happening right here. So you can see how it's all kind of collaborating, okay? Yeah, like I said, like four chapters all happen almost like at once. You see, when the last prophecies start unfolding, they fall like dominoes. Bam, bam, bam. Right after each other. All, all that is in the way is the next major fulfillment. It's called the rapture of the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, so uh, replacement theology, oh, they say the church is protected during this time. Well, verse 7 says otherwise. They're hunted down. The church is not here. Isn't it crazy how people are, like, more comfortable with thinking that church members, the bride of Christ, will be hunted down to be killed? <laughs> well, remember again, I had to constantly remind people, this is not Satan's wrath. This is God's wrath. God is not going to kill his bride. So those dying today for their faith is man's wrath, not God's wrath. Big difference. Today, men are killing the bride, okay? But in the tribulation, it's God unleashing his wrath now, okay? Okay. 
And what happens is many offended by God, by God, they downplay his wrath as if he will protect new Christians. No, no, that's not how it's going to work. You see, peanut brains don't understand that dying for God glorifies him. Okay, it shows to others that we loved God more than our life. Okay, the death of saints proves God is real. This isn't a sad event right now, seeing how you think. It just depends how you think. If you can think spiritual, this is a time of rejoicing because they're finally being taken out of this wicked world because they accepted the invitation to the marriage feast in heaven. Hallelujah. So this, I believe, is the chapter 15, verse 2 group and in chapter 15, verse 2 that are now in heaven and they get to sing a new song with harps. They got victory over the beast. And they're going to sing a new song. That's amazing. So it just depends how you look at it. Yes, they're being overcome. But they're going into the presence of God. Verse 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Verse 8. And who are the ones who worship Satan? Only those not written in the book of life. Those are the only ones. And this book was written before the world was created. That's amazing. The book of life was written before the world was created. You see, God knew he would die for us. His redemption plan was already set in place before he even created the beings that he would redeem. <laughs> That's just fascinating. This don't mean God made some for hell and others only for heaven. You see, this isn't the Calvinist heresy, okay? This means God knew who would choose him from our free will, so he chose us first, okay? You see, people with peanut brains, they don't get why God created Lucifer either because humans needed something called choice, okay? Good or evil. Lucifer does God's will to see who is worthy for eternal life. So, so many people will ask why God put the tree in the garden knowing Eve would eat it. Well, it's called free will. Free will. And when people ask certain questions and you want to answer them, be sure that they're actually asking it because they want an actual answer. And you're not throwing your pearls to the swine just to be stomped on, okay? Yeah, so free will. God isn't a tyrannical dictator, right? So those he wants are those who obey him out of our love for him. What Jesus did on that cross was a rescue mission. We were so pathetic and hopeless that it took God himself to save our sorry butts. Can I say that? Okay. So, so there is a crossroad every human has to go to. All right. You're either one narrow way through the cross or you're on the broad way to hell. There's two roads in life and that's it. It takes one humble to know they need God's righteousness to be saved. And that's why the world is begging for the final Antichrist. Because they already have the spirit of the Antichrist. Look in 1 John 4, 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. It's already in the world. So there's many Antichrists, small a, but their hero, 
the capital A Antichrist will be all they've been looking for. That's crazy. We will be the, he will be the, he, oh, this is just wild. He will be the don't judge no one, just worship me crowd. Okay, that's what he's good. Don't judge no one. I don't care. Everyone do what you want. Just worship me. This is God's wrath. And his wrath is giving them what they wanted. Lies. Verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Plain and simple. Notice in chapter 2 and 3 with the church letters. Look. Every letter ends like this. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Smyrna. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Pergamos. All of them say that. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. But notice here in verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Well, what happened? What the Spirit says to the churches? Well, guess what? The church ain't here. They left the building three and a half years ago. Amen. Verse 9 here is to capture the word of warning. Warning. People will be without excuse. They have been warned. A man like this was coming. This is why I'm warned to not trust any world leaders ever again. Look, I'm going to offend people, but that's okay because I'm not here for feelings. If you, if you think Trump is for us, you are already deceived. I'll tell you that right now. You may be a victim to the Antichrist, the capital A, if you can't even see that Trump, what Trump does and says are more Antichrist things than anyone I have ever heard. Look at the Trump temple coin, okay? And tell me if you're comfortable with that. All the proceeds from his Trump temple coin with his face on it goes to the donations to build the third temple. Tell me if you are comfortable with Israel wanting to build a railway, a train to the mount, to the temple mount. And guess what they want to name it? Trump station. Tell me if you're comfortable with that. The Antichrist will possibly agree with the peace treaty that Trump created already for Israel. The Abrahamic Accord, one world religion. Are you comfortable with that? I'm not. I'm not. Think, people. Think. If you have an ear, then hear. Verse 10. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Verse 10, this is for, this is kind of like for both, both wicked and the new saints. It just depends how you read it. Those working for the beast, leading people into prisons for not bowing to the Antichrist, will also share in that same lot. Okay, God's vengeance. Also, those who kill the new saints will also be killed in the same fashion. All right, God's, by God's vengeance somehow. So this is a warning for those that might think to work for the Antichrist right here. You see, the whole world will be hunting down those who don't worship the beast. The whole government the whole government, it would be like all the government stations, all the police cars right now riding around. They're not looking for criminals. They would be looking for, they would be looking for Christians. Okay. Some will be imprisoned. Okay. To probably be tortured to deny their faith. Others will be killed. So verse 10 is also saying basically an eye for an eye. It's a warning for the persecutors of God's people. About to close this out. This last three and a half years is nothing you can ever imagine. You can't. And it's to test those who know 
who, who now claim to follow Christ, they need patience. Okay, patience and faith. God's telling them that he will reward, that means punish their persecutors. Vengeance is the Lord's. These people had, these tribulation saints, they had no patience and faith prior to the tribulation. Okay, but they do now. Patience comes from trials. And trials is what tests our faith. Their trial, their trials prior to the rapture showed they had no faith. But here they now must show their new faith. Faith comes with patience. Look what the first church endured. Endured. That's what the tribula tribulation saints will endure. Do you know Paul was whipped on five different occasions? 39 times each. At the end of his ministry, he had scars on top of scars on top of scars. Look what Nero did, which is on the same grounds of the Vatican today. Through Christians to the lions. Have you seen the bumper stickers that says more lions and less Christians? Nero also used them for human candles in his garden. Would dip them in wax and light them up. The faith and patience the first church had. All the way up to when Catholicism formed. is now the faith and patience of the last seven years before the return of Christ. If that offends you, it's because you just don't know God. You don't think, you can't think spiritual. To know, to die for Christ glorifies his name. But go back to chapter, look at 2 verse 10. Smyrna, the persecuted church, fear none of those things which you have, which you will suffer. Behold, the devil will cast some of you into prison and you're going to be tried. They said for 10 days specifically for this church. He says, be faithful to the death. And I will give you a crown of life. You understand all these lukewarm that we're trying to witness to and they they just don't get it. They don't get it. How amazing the day may come when we're going to see them in heaven. We get raptured. But we're going to see them popping in there with a crown of life. Let's pray. These teachings are so hard for me, and I try to stay strong, and then I just collapse when I'm done. Lord, Heavenly Father, we trust you. It's your will, and your will will be done. I pray more stop trusting any leader in these last of the last days. It's only going to get worse, not better. Your wrath is coming. It's your wrath that gets people off the fence to take you serious. Many don't want your wrath to come because they just don't understand your plan. It's to remind this world who you are. I pray you come for your bride so you can put an end to this wicked world. And for those who don't want your rat to come, they can question what side are they on. Lord, I just ask for you to glorify your holy name and vengeance is yours. In Jesus' name, amen.